So welcome, welcome back, Chris. Thanks, Guy. As we unite welcome back on to our, my screen. <laughs> on our screen. No, wait a minute. I thought we covered this. <laughs> You're on my screen. <laughs> oh, right, right. Sorry. I so, got momentarily disoriented. Yeah, totally. So it's been a, it's been a while since we returned to Plato, and I think mostly because on some level we've been too busy doing Plato, right? Like, like, the, yeah. It's because we so often we just get on and we just start into a conversation. But this is always kind of the spirit of it, you know, in a certain sense. So it's just nice to get back to it. And, and, and no, yeah, exactly. And complete. We always we always set out we always set out with the intention of reading. Right, but then we uh, we become we become very distracted, and yeah. uh, and we follow things where they may, which I think yeah. is right. I think it's right that we do that. Yeah, but it's also yeah. nice to return. Yeah. So speaking of returning, look, so we're on page five ninety in the Alcibiades um, chapter, and I'll I there's a, a link I'll include to this to this collected volumes, and um, I will start as Alcibiades. And Alcibiades says. You're right. Great, thanks. End of discussion. <laughs> well, after all, that's what matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. If being self-controlled is knowing yourself, then their skills don't make any of them self-controlled. I don't think so. That's why we consider these skills to be beneath us and not suitable for a gentleman to learn. You're quite right, again. Further. <laughs> Furthermore, if someone takes care of his body, then isn't he caring for something that belongs to him and not for himself? Seems likely. And isn't someone who takes care of his wealth caring neither for himself nor for what belongs to him, but for something even further away? And I agree. So the money earner is not, in fact, doing his own work. Right, again. Now, if there was someone who loved Alcibiades' body, he wouldn't be loving Alcibiades, only something that belonged to Alcibiades. That's right. But someone who loved you would love your soul. By our argument, I think he'd have to. Wouldn't somebody, wouldn't someone who loves your body go off and leave you when your beauty is no longer in full bloom? Obviously. But someone who loves your soul will not leave you, as long as you're making progress. That's probably right. Well, I'm the one who won't leave you. I'm the one who will stay with you, now that your body has lost its bloom and everyone else has gone away. All right, let's pause. I just want to pause right there. <laughs> a, a backhanded... Uh, Right. Compliment, if there right. ever was one. Right. Or it's, not totally. a compl it's not a compliment at all, but a backhanded consolation, I suppose. Totally. So this kind of get, I think this is, this is, this points to something. Like this is, this, Socrates, is, here's a moment where Socrates is revealing what he's doing, right? Like where he discloses himself and he points to like what he's doing. And you kind of get this sense of all of these circles that he's been running him through and kind of torching Alcibiades, right? Over and over and over and over again. He's like, it seems like this is one of those moments where he's like, I love your soul. I'm not just going to like use you until, use you and throw you away. Like I'm actually doing something this whole time. Yes. Right? Yes. It seems exactly. like a, this is a beautiful moment, right? He's just made sense of everything that has come before. Yeah. Yeah, because also he has says, characterized yeah. the relationship in yes. a way that now makes sense of its multitude of interactions right. can now be understood in light of the relationship he has just described. Yeah, that the fact that he is he has he has committed himself to the soul of Alcibiades right. is precisely is 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 that by which to understand all of the interactions that have come right. hither to this moment. Right. There's the, that, there's the hermeneutic part. That's right. kind of like, yeah, I just had that sense of when he said that, it's like, yeah, basically, I won't leave you. I'm the one who will stay with you, right? And it's like, if he says, I will stay with you, 
he's also calling to everything that's just happened in that conversation. It just pulled that whole circle around, right? That's right. That's interesting, yeah. That's right, that's right. Okay, I'll, that's go, right. I'll go on and find out what Alcabeti says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you are, Socrates, and I hope you never leave me. Then you must try to be as attractive as possible. <laughs> Yank. <laughs> it's what I say to all my friends too. <laughs> I cer I'll certainly try. So this is your situation. You, Alcibiades, son of Clinius, have no lovers and never have had any, it seems, except for one only. And he is your darling Socrates, son of Sophroniscus and Finarite. True. Remember when I first spoke to you? You said that you were just about to say something. You wanted to ask me why I was the only one who hadn't given up on you. That's right. Well, this is the reason. I was your only lover. The others were only lovers of what you had. While your possessions are passing their prime, you are just beginning to bloom. Mm. I shall never forsake you now. Never. Unless the Athenian people make you corrupt and ugly. And that is my greatest fear, that a love of the common people might corrupt you, for many Athenian gentlemen mm. have suffered that fate already. The people of great-hearted Erechtheus might look attractive on the outside, but you need to scrutinize them in their nakedness, so take the precaution I urge. W what precaution? Get in training first, my dear friend and learn what you need to know before entering politics. That will give you an antidote against the terrible dangers. Yeah, like people really listened to him, you know, 2000 years ago, as we're now demonstrating, <laughs> we're now seeing. So right. this, so right here, okay, let, let, I kind of want to, I want, I kind of want to, like there's something really big right there, right? Of, well, one, he's making a distinction, right? So he's, he's pulling in the common, right? And that it's basically, um, and if you go the way of the common, they can make you ugly, right? But I'm seeing what is most beautiful in you, um, yet unbloomed. And, and it's going to take something beautiful in you that to, to the training to be able to, to bloom it. Right? Yes. That's right. Right. That's right. And then as a primer, before entering into a political arena, this is very significant too, right? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, what he is trying to dispose in this relationship, the love and attention and the caring for the soul that he's trying to provoke Alcibiades into, right. should prefigure any foray into something less than ultimate. Yeah. something that engages Alcibiades at the level of his possessions, at the level of his identity that is subordinate to the identity of the soul that Socrates is trying to stoke. Yeah. And so he's prefiguring the boundaries of the, re the arena in which Alcibiades will enter into play in order that Alcibiades does not mistake the arena and the game he's playing for anything more ultimate than it is, oh, right? Yeah. So it's almost like he's giving him a view of the landscape into which he will now venture so that he doesn't lose himself within it when he enters it. Yeah. So that he can be, re he can retrieve and be retrieved from it properly. He's, he's warning, yeah, it's almost like Socrates is warning him and initiating him in a non-idolatry. Precisely. Right? Like, and on some level, he's got to give up everything that's common, right? To realize maybe what can't even be seen on some level, right? Um, right. And be trained, and he's got to be trained in the ability to do that. Because if not, then the agent arena, right, relationship, the self-world mm. process won't, it'll be all participation with no individuation, right? Or or the individual, the individual will be an inauthentic one, closed in the house, like in the close of the commons, just given by what they want. So there's a kind. Of, I, I'm getting this sense of like participation, the Tillich sense of the participation mm -hmm. and the individuation. And so Socrates is saying, hold that tension. In fact, you're not ready for that tension. Yeah. Right? 
go and like find something that you can't actually grasp, right? That you just don't go into images basically. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that this, his identity relation always remains straddling between what's inside of the boundaries of the politicking of the game he's played. And part of it always remains outside the bound. right? It's like a transframing exercise, understanding that his, the composure of his identity has to straddle the in the interior and exterior boundaries of the frame rather than to be enveloped by them entirely. And so Socrates sort of is, 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 is maintaining attention of his perspective, yes. maintaining a presence of his perspective outside the boundaries and in then in the tension between what is inside and what is outside, maintaining a tether on his soul. And that's, it sounds like Socrates in some ways, Blas is loving that part in him. He's loving it, right? And he's saying that's the most beautiful thing and I think what, what I'm getting is this sense of, and maybe, and maybe if we like look at what the soul is in this, it sounds like it's that, which is in some straddling, relate. it's connected to the continuity of all those things. So if like Socrates loves right. his soul, right? Basically, he's saying, I'm going to like, as that blossoms, it'll blossom in like right relationship as you're describing here, that thing that straddles. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a way of saying that Socrates loves the more of him. That's now dawning into consciousness right. as a consequence of having lost all of those, all of those frivolities right. by which he constituted his identity right. before the fact of this dialogue. Right. Totally. And he's also saying like, and by the way, since I'm taking one for the team, try to look good too. (laughs) Try to stay pretty. (laughs) Yeah. Because I'm, it's not going to matter ultimately. (laughs) So please. (laughs) Yeah. You bet. Yeah, totally. You bet. You bet. Okay. So this, I think you're right, Socrates. Is that, is that where we are? Uh, Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think you're right, Socrates, but try to explain how exactly we should cultivate ourselves. Well, we've made one step forward anyway. We've pretty well agreed what we are. We were afraid that we might make a mistake about that and unwittingly cultivate something other than ourselves. That's hmm. right. Which I think, which I think is that, right, that returns yeah. us to the point, right, which yeah. is that he wants to be sure that whatever is being cultivated here is um, is 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 the self that can know itself as more yeah. than what it than what is prescribed of it yeah. by the particular parameters of its exercise yeah. in the confines of Athenian activity right. per se. Right, right. that's right. the self that must be yes. regathered here. Right. And, um, and throughout this whole thing, he's exemplified how you could unwittingly cultivate something other than ourselves. That's right. Right. That you could be, you, it's filled with self-deception, right? It's possible to try to or think you are. And then the very thing that's trying keeps you from noticing that you aren't at all. Right. That's right. Huh. And Alcabides is the same thing. That's right. That's right. (laughs) And the next step is that we have to cultivate our soul and look to that. Obviously. And let others take care of our bodies and our property. Quite so. Now, how can we get the clearest knowledge of our soul? If we knew that, we'd probably know ourselves as well. By the gods, that admirable Delphic inscription we just mentioned. Didn't we understand it? What's the point of bringing that up again, Socrates? I'll tell you what I suspect that inscription means and what advice it's giving us. There may not be many examples of it except the case of sight. What do you mean by that? You think about it too. If the inscription took our eyes to be men and advised them, see thyself, 
how would we understand such advice? Shouldn't the eye be looking at something in which it could see itself? Obviously. Then let's think of something that allows us to see both it and ourselves when we look at it. Oh, God. Right? Here's where the Socratic self-knowledge starts to become yeah. really definitional. Really definitional here. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Socrates, you mean mirrors and that sort of thing. Wait, right. And isn't there something like that in the eye, which we see with? Certainly. I'm sure you've noticed that when a man looks into an eye, his face appears in it, like in a mirror. We call this the pupil, for it's a sort of miniature of the man who's looking. You're right. Then an eye will see itself as if it observes an eye and looks at the best part of it, the part with which it can see. See, so it seems. But it won't see itself if it looks at anything else in a man or anything else at all, unless it's similar to the eye. You're right. So if an eye is to see itself, it must look at an eye. And at that region of it in which the good activity of an eye actually occurs. And this, I presume, is seeing. That's right. Then if the soul Alcibiades is to know itself, it must look at a soul, and especially at that region in which what makes a good soul? Sorry, let me take this again. Then if, a soul, then if the soul Alcibiades is to know itself, it must look at a soul, and especially at that region in which what makes a soul good, wisdom occurs, and at anything else which is similar to it. Oh, let's, let's just, I just want to read that, that again. That, that, that line could very well be, I think, um, that I mean that's a that's as good a definition for dialogos as there is. Yeah, yeah. Let's read that right. with that in mind, right? Then if I mean this entire sequence, but even just that line. Yeah. And if the soul Alcibiades is to know itself, it must look at a soul, and especially at that region in which what makes a soul good, wisdom occurs, and at anything else which is similar to it. Right. It must totally. like it, liken to it. Yeah. And witness itself emerging in the reflection. Yeah. Of what is good. Right. Right. To be and fully it, known by it. Totally. Even the it. Th even the thing about like it's like there's something like that really shows this way in which wisdom is not possessable. Right. right. But it's in the relational responsiveness of looking at at us like looking at that which you see it and you see yourself transparent to themselves at the same time. Right? Yes. Yes, that's right. That's so right. Like a, that's right. It's a way of, it's a way of in seeing, in you being disclosed in me, I am simultaneously disclosed to you and to myself, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's why, that's why I think of it. I mean, the, the word transparent comes up now and again when we talk about this, but I think of it more, that's why we, We've talked about this before, but I think of it more as more as more as a translucency because yeah. you're both you're both seeing the um, you're both seeing the sight organ and you're seeing by means of the sight organ right. simultaneously, right. right? And that's why you're you're both. I mean, that's where the the the, the combined integration and differentiation come from, yeah. precisely because of that translucency. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You're not Absolutely. you're not simply seeing through to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're seeing what is seeing in addition to beholding, it's beholden. Right. And I think that's right. That's what's significant here. I also, I mean, the, the, uh, the, at the top of the page when Socrates says, you know, I'm sure you've noticed that when a man looks into an eye, his face appears in it like a mirror. We call this the pupil. I mean, I, I can't help but enjoy the, the, the that right. double meaning of pupil yeah. too. Yeah. Right? yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that speaks a whole lot unto itself. Right, and in a certain sense, Socrates is bringing him up to peer. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. That's right. being peers. That's right. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. Wow. When the pupil comes to peer. Yeah. Yeah. And Alcibiades says, and I agree with you, Socrates. I think I've lost the plot here, guy. Where are we again? Oh, we're like, so, so you just wrote, Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Um, 
Can we say that there is anything about the soul which is more divine than where knowing and understanding take place? Sorry, I, 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 missed, I missed a word there. Can we say that, uh, that there is anything about the soul which is more divine than that where knowing and understanding take place? No, we can't. Then that region in it resembles the divine. And someone who looked at that and grasped everything divine, vision and understanding, would have the best grasp of himself as well. So it seems. But we agreed that knowing oneself was the same as being self-controlled. Certainly. So if we don't know ourselves and weren't self-controlled, would we be able to know which of the things that belong to us were good and which were bad? How could we know that, Socrates? No, I suppose it would seem impossible to you to know that what belong to know that what belongs to Alcibiades belongs to him without knowing Alcibiades. Quite impossible, I'm sure. And similarly, we couldn't know what belongs to us. Sorry. And similarly, we couldn't know that what belongs to us belongs to us without knowing ourselves. How could we? And if we didn't even know what belongs to us, how could we possibly know what belongs to our belongings? We couldn't. Then it wasn't quite right to agree, as we did a few minutes ago that some people know what belongs to them without knowing themselves, while others know what belongs to their belongings. It seems that it's the job of one man and one skill to know all these things, himself, his belongings, and his belongings' belongings. That seems likely. And it follows that anyone who doesn't know his own belongings probably won't know other people's belongings either. Quite so. And if he doesn't know other people's belongings, nor will he know what belongs to the city. He couldn't. So such a man couldn't become a statesman. Of course not. Nor could he even manage a household estate. Of course not. Nor indeed will he know what he's doing. Certainly not. And if he doesn't know what he's doing, won't he make mistakes? Certainly. Since he make mistakes, won't he conduct himself badly, both publicly and privately? Of course. Since he conducts himself badly, won't he be a failure? Absolutely. What about the people he's working for? They will, uh, I'm sorry, they will be too. Then it's impossible for anyone to prosper unless he is self-controlled and good. Impossible. So it's the bad men who are failures. Absolutely. And so the way to avoid being a failure is not by getting rich, but by being self-controlled. Apparently. So it's not walls or warships. Let me just make sure I turn the right page there. Yes. So it's not so it's not walls or warships or shipyards that cities need, Alcibiades, if they are to prosper, nor is it numbers or size without virtue. Definitely. Virtue. So if you are to manage the city's business properly and well, you must impart virtue to the citizens. Ah, here's the here's virtue. Of course. Is it possible to impart something you haven't got? How could you? Then you, or anyone else who is to be ruler and trustee, not only of himself and his private business, but also the city and the city's business, must first acquire virtue himself. You're right. So what you need to get for yourself and for the city isn't political power, nor the authority to do what you like. What you need is justice and self-control. Apparently. Because, my dear Alcibiades, when an individual or a city with no intelligence is at liberty to do what he or it wants, what do you think the likely result will be? For example, if he's sick and has the power to do whatever he likes without any medical insight, but with such a dictator's power that nobody criticizes him, what's going to happen? Isn't it likely his health will be ruined? You're right. And in a ship, if someone were free to do what he liked, but was completely lacking in insight and skill and navigation. Don't you see what would happen to him and his fellow sailors? I do indeed. They would all die. Likewise, in a, likewise, if a city or any ruler or administrator is lacking in virtue, then bad conduct will result. It must. Well then, my good Alcibiades, if you are to prosper, it isn't supreme power you need to get for yourself or the city, but virtue. You're right. But before one acquires virtue, 
It's better to be ruled by somebody superior than to rule. This applies to men as well as to boys. So it seems. And isn't what is better also more admirable? Yes. And isn't what is more admirable more appropriate? Of course. So it's appropriate for a bad man to be a slave, since it's better. Yes. And vice is appropriate for a slave. Apparently. And virtue is appropriate for a free man. Yes. Well, my friend, shouldn't we avoid whatever is appropriate for slaves? Yes. As much as possible, Socrates. Can you see what condition you're now in? Is it appropriate for a free man or not? I think I see only too clearly. Then do you know how to escape from your present state? Let's not call a handsome young man by that name. I do. How? It's up to you, Socrates. That's not well said, Alcibiades. Well, what should I say? That it's up to God. Then, that's what I say. And furthermore, I say this as well. We're probably going to change roles, Socrates. I'll be playing yours, and you'll be playing mine. For from this day forward, I will never fail to attend, to attend on you, and you will always have me as your attendant. Then my love for you, my excellent friend, will be just like a stork. After hatching a winged love in you, it will be cared for by it in return. Yes, that's right. I'll start to cultivate justice in myself right now. I should like to believe that you will preserve, per, sorry, I should like to believe that you will persevere, but I'm afraid, not because I distrust your nature, but because I know how powerful the city is. Hmm. I'm afraid it might get the better of both me and you. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow, I think just right in those in that part, like this last part that we read, I think I'm starting to get the the beginnings of the wisdom of the order, actually. Mm. Right? Because it just seems to set so many things up. Right. You mean the reading order? Yeah. The reading yeah, order. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, because it it isn't it yeah, isn't it telling that it begins or sorry, rather concludes with a with an open ended proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Not a proposition, but a pro right. John makes this distinction often, right? Yeah. And it gets a good distinction. The proposal, that's the deed, and the proposition, that's yeah. the speech. It, be yeah. it ends with a proposal. Right. A proposal. It's a covenantal proposal almost, yeah. right? It's a mutual commitment. Yeah. And, um, and, and also, by the very end, he's like, and he's basically saying, and we're probably not going to succeed. Going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> yeah. Which, like, says to, like, it places in the right aspirational place, right? That's right. Like that's the, right. Like it, it mostly admits of like the one, the ones who would do this aren't the ones talking right now, right? They're yeah. the ones that could be. Yeah, yeah, right? that's right. That's right. So interesting how it just kept, it's like it both kept tightening, tightening up, the circle kept tightening up, but also pointing to more and more of the center being everywhere, right? This sense that's of right. like, I really got this sense of the, di the, the dialectic between especially at the end where it's like between um, the, the thing that Socrates loves in Alcibiades, right? Right. Is not the thing is not the city, right? It's like, no, he's got a, it's the thing he's loving is the thing that needs to be educated, right? To be a self that, and this is what's interesting, to be a self that is called by virtue, right? Mm -hmm not by any of the like the not by any of the mechanisms that you can kind of normally just you know take to be a city right but That's what right. it's going to take to be the city is a virtue so like that comment it opens up about virtue there too that's right uh -huh. that's right that's right and uh, and then the the um the home that they're trying to mutually make in virtue yeah. is held is 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 held and belonged together in virtue of their right. relationship, right. right? 
because the dialogue, even as it ventures into one proposition or another, it always returns again and again and again, right? It does so at the very beginning mm -hmm. and then again, um, somewhere in the middle and then again here at the end. It always returns to the, mm -hmm. the recommitment of their philia as the thing that will anchor their correspondence to the virtue that they're trying to that they're trying to 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 uh, invocate right. here right? right it's 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 their it's their it's their affinity that draws them back into virtue yeah when yeah. everything else will threaten to undermine it right right it's the speaking it's the yeah. speaking into one another yes. that will recollect the yeah. presence that knows their mutual identities yeah. in virtue of each other. Right. And it, like Alcobides even says at the very, the last thing he says, what, what was it like? Um, he I'll says, start to uh, cultivate justice in myself right now, yes, he says. Right. Yeah. And in yeah. the part before that where he says, well, um, then that's what I say. And furthermore, I say this as well. We're we're probably going to change roles, right? That just that sense of presencing again, it's like it's presencing that, you know, who is the character Socrates, right? Yeah. Like, like there, it, it shows like a kind of an interchangeability, right? Of the roles of like, maybe one can be handed over to the other, right? That this is something that isn't, um, uh, it isn't in me. It isn't in Socrates. But it's somehow. That's right. It's somehow tale. It's a talos, right? Yes. Right. And that just that sense of just the calling, like that the world, right, withdraws, right, and the it withdraws as the character becoming figure, right. The the worlding, just that just that sense. I think it shows the the non. Yeah, like it's, it's funny. It keeps it keeps coming to me. It's like it's it's on some level you could almost look at this dialogue as Socrates completely holding up an image and taking it down, holding up an image and taking it down. Like, and then and then all the way through, and then right at the end he talks about virtue, but the virtue is like where is the virtue? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the because the because the telos of their relation is the processual coming into virtue. Yeah, that's yes. why it that's why it exceeds each of their identities. Yeah, right. That's why I mean when when Al Spidey says right, I, I believe that we might switch roles. Somehow they can switch the the prospect of them switching roles doesn't at all undermine right. the prospective friendship and yeah. its future possibility. Right. Right. Precisely because the mutual coming into virtue that characterizes the relation is over and above the identities that are disposed in their, yeah. in their, in their, in their, in the commitments of the everyday. I shouldn't say right. commitments; that's confusing things. But in yeah. the, in the, in the sort of the roles of the everyday as they take them up within the Athenian society, right? right? Become kind of icons. Yeah, to each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Or certainly Socrates, Alcibiades, and and but but the but the reciprocity is loaned by Socrates to the conversation. Yes. Right, right. Yes, right. That's the situation. I just I was just surprised at how much of this is about is is really about is like it's about setting up idols and taking them away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> setting That's up right. idols and taking them away. Right. Just that sense right. of what is the thing that we're calling real and that there that that's where it starts to get at that sense of where the pair even in this even in the even that the medium is language and dialogue right what basically i think in that it's they're like the dialogue is leading them into something that can't actually be said <laughs> right but in that role being, I have a feeling the, the roles will be switched, right? And he's saying, it's like, oh yeah, it's presence is the thing that's like even the thing we're circling around that's emerging. That's right. It's been calling through the conversation the whole time that like, if you try to grab it, it's not the thing, but it, it's the normativity 
right? That's right. That um, gra- like it is granted by the, in a certain sense, the future, right? Which ends up being the origin of the normativity, right? So like the origin, think about Heidegger now, like that sense of like, yeah, origin always calls from the future, mm-hmm. right? Because it is that sense of like if, in a virtue, you don't have the virtue yet. You don't have it. <laughs> no, right? that's why you're, you're coming into it. You're yeah. ever coming into it. You're yes. ever coming into it. You're ever yes. coming into it. Totally. It is and something, it is something you're, it. It, 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 and that's why I think the possessive, the, 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 the inversion of the possessive relationship is very important, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, similar to the idea that you don't have ideas, ideas have you, right? That famous yeah. kind of adage um, from Jung and others. Uh, right. Same thing applies here, I think, that, right? That you're not, you're not possessed of the virtue. The virtue, you are, um, huh. you are, you are possessed by the virtue. Yeah. And you, you yield yourself to its possession right. almost magnetically. Right. And, um, and that's why it ends. I think that's part of why it, you're right. I mean, they're groping, they're, 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 mm-hmm. they're circling around the something that is mm-hmm. withdrawing from them as yeah. they center on it. Yeah. But it's, that's why this ends that's somewhat enigmatically with a, with a, with a, with a profession to continue groping with a profession to continue yeah. To to continue to center on that which cannot be centered on. Totally, nice nice groping with you, my friend. Great groping. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, stay attractive, guy. That's why I have my shirt. You know, <laughs> your checkered shirt. I know. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. It always is. It always yeah. is. So we've actually finished a dialogue. Hooray yeah, for I, us! I we we, we really did. <laughs> We took our time, but yes, yes. that's okay. It should be savored. Yeah, it should absolutely. be savored. Absolutely. So we'll we'll move on to another one next time. We'll open it. a whole new a whole new journey that will conclude with the with the commitment to continue groping. Absolutely. All right, my friend. You have a good weekend. You too. Talk to you yes. soon. All right, bye. Okay. Bye.